Photoshop can be really intimidating for a new photographer. To be honest, not even new photographers, a lot of people just shy away from it because it just seems like so much to learn. In Tim Ferriss' book, The 4-Hour Workweek, he talks a lot about the Pareto Principle. Pareto was an Italian economist slash philosopher, and he sort of championed this idea of whatever it is in life, 20% of the inputs will get you 80% of the results. So I'm going to take that sort of philosophy today, and I'm going to pick sort of like my top 20% of the tools and stuff in Photoshop that will, I think, get you most of the way to anything you need to do as a photographer. So without further ado, let's get into it. So probably the most important and powerful concept overall in Photoshop is that of non-destructive editing. That basically means you don't actually alter the pixels of the original file. Like your, your original is still there underneath everything. You can go back to it whenever you want. And Photoshop takes this to another level by using something called layers. And layers are basically just a way that you can stack lots of different images and effects on top of each other. Depending on the order of the layers and what's in each layer is depending on what the final product is, what the image is that you're actually gonna see on your screen. As an example, um, for pretty much any project that I'm working on, the first thing I would do would be to hit Command J, or I think it's Control on a PC, and that just duplicates the background layer. That just means you've got another copy of whatever you're working on. And that means that at any time, I can refer back and look to the original. And let's say, for some reason, I just wanted to draw on this with the black brush. So this is now happening in layer one. I can reduce the opacity of this. I can hide it. I can even just delete it and go back to square one. Taking this concept a little bit further, we use something called a mask in Photoshop. A mask is basically just something that you use to decide what to show and what to not show about a certain layer. Let me give you an example. So here I have two images in separate layers, one on top of another. They were shot on a tripod and as such, you can stack them very easily and they line up quite well. So what I can do here is I can add a mask with this little tool down here. As you can see on the right hand side, it's got a little uh, link icon and it's got a little white square here. Basically that means everything in this layer is visible in the mask. If we invert it, command I, change it to black, that means everything in the mask is not visible. The entire layer is filled in with black and that means it's transparent so you can see what's on the layer underneath. But the beauty of the mask, if you click B to select your brush tool and you select white, you can paint. Make sure you have the, last, the mask selected here by clicking on it. You can basically paint in to the mask to show that specific area. So if we just turn it on and off, you can see that this white section, hang on, if I option click on the mask. So what this is showing me now is that all of this black area is currently not visible. It's transparent and you're seeing right through. But this little bit that I've painted in white here, that is what is showing up of this top layer here. What is brilliant about this is at any point you can go back to that mask and make an adjustment just by painting in black or white. For example, if you have a look at this, I've affected the ocean here a little bit by painting it a bit too much. I mean, not that it looks bad, it all matches up, but let's say I wanted to get rid of this ocean. I would just switch my brush back to black and then I could paint back in that original ocean there. Refine the edges of this mask a little bit. All of a sudden, we have this more complete composition. If I delete this layer mask, ultimately you could achieve the same result by just using the eraser tool and just erasing parts of the image. It's not the worst way to do it, but if you have a look, if we turn the background layer off, you've actually destroyed the pixels. You've removed the pixels from that top layer. So essentially this is a destructive form of editing. So we understand layers and we understand masks. The next really important concept to grasp in Photoshop is adjustments. You can kind of think of adjustments kind of like your sliders in Lightroom, let's say. You control the tonal or the color adjustments of the image. Um, a lot of people are taught traditionally to go to image adjustments and you have all the different adjustments here. I would avoid doing that where possible. Um, it works, but again, it's a more destructive form of editing. We're going to learn how to do it non-destructively so you can go back and change it or adjust or just delete if you would like to without harming the actual pixels. So 
let's just start by duplicating a background layer just because that's what I do to pretty much everything. And over here, you have the adjustments panel. Oh, I should say as well, if your Photoshop is not set up the same way as mine, you can just go to window and workspace and just click photography. Yours might be set into essentials, um, but yeah. Okay, so let's say we wanted to change the color of the orangutan's fur. We can go up here to the adjustments panel. Let's click hue and saturation. This is gonna create a new layer. It's an adjustment layer. And that means you have the properties here of the adjustment, but you can see down here, there's a layer mask baked into it. The layer mask is filled in with white. That means everything in that layer is visible. And basically that means anything that we do to this adjustment is gonna be seen across the whole layer. We don't really want that. So let's just, as an example, Let's change this fur to like a deeper red color. Something like that. So as you can see, toggling the visibility, it's going across the image. It's going to a lot of places that we don't really want to see that sort of color in, but we now know how to use a layer mask. So using B for brush and making sure we have the color black selected, we can paint out the rest of the image. Or an easier way to do it would be to invert the layer mask to black. We can zoom in here. With white selected, we can just paint in the red color on the orangutan. So remember I said it was non-destructive and you can go back and change it or remove it or whatnot after the fact. Well, when we click on this layer, you can now see I've decided it's a bit too red, so I want to tune it back. I can do that right here without affecting anything else in the image. I think that's pretty good. Totally non-destructive, no pixels were harmed in the making of this video. Okay, so let's keep building those skills on top of one another. We know layers, we know masks, we now know adjustments. The next thing I want to talk about is selections. Selection is basically just a specified area of a photo that you want to edit without affecting any others. It sort of goes hand in hand with masks, I guess, but if you have a look, I made this quick selection with the polygonal lasso, and now wherever I brush in is only going to be within that selection. Why is that useful? Let's say I wanted to keep this guy bright in the middle of the frame here, but I wanted to darken off the rest of the image. There's a lot of different ways to, to do selections, just like anything else in Photoshop. We're going to start off just by going select and select subject. The latest version of Photoshop does a very, very good job of this straight up. But as you can see, not completely perfect. You can see it's got most of the guy. It's even done his hair relatively well. But it's also got this lady here, a bit of the pizza box. So how do we subtract from the selection? Again, a lot of different ways to do it. I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool. Basically, that just means wherever you click, it just adds onto the selection until you close it up at the end. So I'm just gonna go hold down Option or Alt on a PC. And I'm just gonna select this side of the image, close it up, and I'm just gonna get rid of that bit of selection there. Same thing here, hold down Option. Let's just get rid of this part here. Pretty good, good enough. So now what we can do is, well, we can do a couple of things. We can just go Command J and just duplicate that into a new layer. And then we can put an adjustment layer underneath and control it that way. That works quite well. That's pretty quick and easy. What I like to do though, is I like to go select, select and mask. You can do some further refinements here. This is a whole other video in itself. This is basically showing you your selection here and the red area is masked. So let's scroll down to the bottom. Output to, let's say, new layer with layer mask. And we know how a layer mask works now. If you can see this little black square down here, click on it. The white area is visible. The black area is transparent. So behind that, hang on. If we put an adjustment layer, reduce the brightness, we can affect that without affecting him. We can even take that a step further. Whatever adjustment we want to make, we make a new adjustment layer just by clicking one of these. Let's say we want to change the levels and you can click this layer mask and drag that 
onto this adjustment layer. And what that does now is you're only adjusting what's in that layer. Again, if we have a look at the mask, the white area is what the adjustment is going to be applied to. The black area is transparent, so you'll see the layer below. Pretty cool, right? So if we crunch those midtones, bring in those blacks, just as an example, very cool, very easy way to edit just the subject or whatever the selection is that you want to use. So continuing to build on top of these skills, the last thing I want to show you today is healing slash cloning. So again, just for safety, what I usually do is Command J to duplicate the background layer. It just keeps one safe in the back pocket just in case. So let's zoom in. Let's have a look at the spots on the back of the wall here. Let's say I thought that these were going to be a bit distracting and I wanted to get rid of them. The first thing that I would do to do that would to be hit J, which opens up the spot healing brush. And it's as simple as just brushing in over those spots. The content aware features in Photoshop, the latest version are insane. And basically that just means it's gonna take a bit of a measure of everything around what you're working with, and it's gonna work out what it needs, what needs to go there, what needs to make it look seamless. So that's pretty amazing. It also works on spots on your face. These guys have pretty clean skin, but if I wanna be picky and pick out little spots or freckles, works very well on those. Cool, easy. Another way to do this is, um, it's called the clone stamp tool. You can hit S to pick that up. So the way that works is you pick a little sample and then you brush over that and it's going to, it's going to take from where you started that sample and it's going to brush that in and blend it with the area that you're replacing. So let's have a look down here. Let's have a look at this little blemish. Sample down there, paint over it. Sample down there, paint over it. Sample from down there, paint over it. Easy as that. I'll show you a better example of that soon. Let's combine a couple of the things that we've learned so far. So if we grab the marquee tool up here, this is basically just like the polygonal lasso, except you just make selections in a square. So if we choose this window up here, we're gonna hit shift delete and use some of the content aware or like the healing sort of features Contents, make sure you have content aware selected. Let's click OK. That's going to seamlessly extend that background. This is a pretty easy one because it's just a wall, but that's so useful, right? You can get rid of those windows. Let's say I wanted to make this image vertical. I could go to the crop tool, open this up here, make sure content aware is selected. Again, Photoshop is gonna sort of take stock of what's around and it's gonna decide what it needs to make this image seamless. That's cool, right? Show poster. There's a lot of flexibility this can give you. There's one more sort of trick I wanna teach you in this sort of healing, like content aware sort of category. And this one is probably a little bit easier. So again, just to be safe, let's Command J, duplicate the background layer and let's zoom in here. Let's say we wanna get rid of these power lines. So, first thing I would try would be to heal it with the spot healing brush. That actually works pretty well. It doesn't always though. And when it doesn't, you have a few other tools up your sleeve. Let's go back to the clone stamp. So what I want to do, well, let's have a look at this. If I take a little sample here and I want to clone that power line out, again, pretty good. Not perfect though. It's a little bit more fiddly. So let's can that. With our clone stamp tool, let's just break it up into little pieces. That'll make it a bit more manageable. So let's say I just split it here. I'm gonna split it here. I'm gonna split it here. And I'm gonna split it here. The next tool I wanna to use is called the patch tool. So basically, similar to the selections we were doing before, the patched tool, you can make a selection within it. And then all you have to do is grab your selection, pick an area of similar texture, drag it over, and then Photoshop will do the rest. Click an area with a similar texture, Photoshop will blend it in. Click an area with a similar texture, Photoshop will blend that in beautifully. Using a combination of these three tools, you can pretty much get away with removing anything in Photoshop. I mean, within reason. 
When one of the tools doesn't work for you, try a different one and failing that, just break it down into smaller chunks. I promise with a little bit of patience, it's not that hard to do. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was useful to you. If you want to support me in any way, you can do that by smacking that like button, subscribing if you haven't already. And if you made it this far in the video, could you do me a favor and drop a little frog emoji in the comments down below? I think that'd be really funny and confuse a lot of people scrolling through. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next.